And good morning, everybody. Here we are once again at Unity of Pompano Beach Spiritual Center. And this week, we are thrilled to see that we have our Facebook audience, I think, hooked up with a good form of audio. I hope you're getting the audio a little bit clearer now. And in my imagination, you are seated, seated on my right, because that camera is over there. Welcome, everyone. I'm Bev Spivey. I am really thrilled to be here as your co-minister with my husband, Reverend Lawrence Palmer. And we have our musicians with us, directed, as usual, by our music minister, James McCoy. Already, that was the most fun I've had playing music all week with those two songs right there. So, Because we're playing with real humans. Would you please welcome once again at the piano and keyboard, Mr. John Rose, at the drum set, Mr. Orlando Machado, and of course... Karina Iglesias is our featured soloist. And let's see, we have music from Leanne Womack today and uh, a song from the movie Wonder. So, Yeah. And in a minute, you'll know why we're wondering. We're wondering why you're singing that song. It's because our monthly theme is wonder. It's curiosity, actually. But let me start by talking about our theme for the whole year is seeing life with perfect vision, looking through a spiritual lens. And you know, we have many challenges upon us with the isolation that we're encountering and the restrictions that we're encountering because of the COVID-19 pandemic. On the other hand, we can lift up our thoughts, we can look at things with perfect vision. We can understand that we are just a small part of the entire world that is experiencing this. So we can get our thoughts in perspective a little bit and reach out there with love and compassion. And among other things, it works with the energy of the universe to heal everyone. And on top of that, it makes you feel better. So we encourage everybody to continue looking at life with perfect vision. So this month, of course, we are in the month of May with curiosity as our theme. And we're going to be looking at curiosity with eyes of wonder. I do have an affirmation to share with you. I live in a world of wonder. So let's take that into our heart right now as we wonder what's going to happen next. Let's remember to look at the world with that curiosity of a child, with that expectation of good. And join with me in that affirmation, I live in a world of wonder. And so let's take that into prayer this morning. We close our eyes wherever we are. We get comfortable in our chair, wherever we are as we tune into our virtual community. The vision of Unity of Pompano Beach since 2010 has been to be centered in God and create an ever-expanding spiritual community of one. When we were thinking of that, we only vaguely were thinking about the internet and the ability to reach out into the world, and now it's here. We are broadcasting on this eighth Sunday, reaching out, reaching out, expanding our spiritual community. And each of you is part of it. We give thanks for our ability to step into the future with wonder, with enthusiasm, with compassion, with love. And so it is. Amen. And let's get started with our music team leading us in. Ready, every heart is prepared 
got you in the mood to join all of us together now. So get on the phone to any of your relatives and friends and invite them into the website, unitypompanobeach.org, or certainly start a Facebook watch party. Our Facebook address is Unity of Pompano Spiritual Center. So you can find us at either place. The live stream will be on our website all week long where you can tune in at any time and catch it there. There are also the 20-minute recorded sermons are there as well under the heading of resources at the top. So welcome, everybody. It's good to invisibly see you. Now I remember who's sitting on the right, closer to my Facebook side. I remember who sits on the left. I remember who moves from there over to there just to scramble me up and see the difference in every congregation. And you know, we're looking forward into a new day. And we're hearing from many of you that although you are really anxious to come back again, this is working just fine too, as we have all of our events and activities through Zoom now, and it, it's working really well. So one of the things that you have at your disposal, you've always had it, but now especially is prayer. We have 17 prayer chaplains, I'm told. And each of them is dedicated to praying with you during the week. If you would like a phone call, they will do that. If you would like an email response, they will do that. But know that every prayer request is being held in prayer. And you can get our prayer request form on our website. On the top link, there's a link for prayer, and you will see it right there. And you can send it in with your name, but you can also send it in anonymously. So do take advantage of prayer. Don't isolate yourself from spiritual community. So prayer definitely is available, as is the Contact Us form on that very same page. Contact us with anything uh, that you would need to keep your spiritual community aware of and with any uh, particular events you want to share with us. It's nice to hear about the good things, too, isn't it? So come on and use our uh, website as much as you can. The announcements are there. This Tuesday night, I start a course. can read along but we hope you will sign up and come to the class go to our website there is a link to press uh, there which will take you right to our registration page the class is sixty dollars for the entire six weeks if you pay in advance or if you're not certain of your schedule 
you may pay $10 a week. All of that is through the registration page. I'm thrilled that 17 of you so far have signed up. And we've got five or six of you, I believe, that are coming from out of state. Some of our snowbirds are stuck in the north. And uh, some of our former students who come here for our annual event are joining in. So we look forward to having a class to dig into what did Charles really mean about the use of these powers within our chakra system, within our mind, with how to use our thoughts, and how to develop our spiritual body in addition to keeping our physical body healthy. So that's a big promo on, since it's my class, I can do it, right? I'm the one with the microphone. Our weekly guided meditation has been very popular. We've had two weeks now. It's on a Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Again, sign up through our website, unitypompanobeach.org, because we keep our Zoom connection uh, private and secure. And so sign up for the meditation. It's absolutely free. It's on a donation basis. And we invite all of you to join in for a meditation on Thursday evenings. We take plenty of time at the beginning to see each other and check in with each other. If you haven't explored Zoom meetings yet, you, there's a big gallery there. You can see everybody's picture. And it's fun to see each other in t-shirts and messy hair and just come as you are. It's very relaxing. The meditation is about 20 to 30 minutes uh, overall for that time. So come on in for that. The other thing that we have ongoing, we've had it now for a number of weeks, is our power hour, which is the hour we usually used to meet in Fellowship Hall prior to this service. But now they are meeting with Zoom, led by Cynthia Roberts, our wonderful licensed teacher. And they are continuing to study their book. So please, take advantage of these spiritual community opportunities. Power Hour is in a class format. You learn a lot there. You have a lot that you can think about and work on each week. And so we're asking for a $10 love offering per class. But actually, that is not even required. You may come into that class for free. Because what is happening here, we've noticed in these seven weeks now, our regular members, our regular contributors are sustaining us. And those of you who are joining in anew are also recognizing the value of this spiritual community. And you send in donations. So we want everyone to be involved, and we thank all of you. So lastly, our women's group continues to meet. And we have, our schedule is that we take the summers off and just go to luncheons and do things kind of spontaneously. But the women's group is going to meet Saturday this week, on Saturday, May 9th. It's from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. We will be again checking in on zoom the link is on our website and so click in there get your registration in for the zoom link this meeting too is on a donation basis so invite all women any woman interested in being a member of our goddess tribe is welcome to come on in no men allowed this week we will be making mandalas so we have a little bit of creativity going in addition to our sharing. So we hope all of you will spread the word to come on in to our virtual community here as we continue to hold love, compassion, and healing thoughts for all of you. So let's all now, as we usually have a greeting time during our physical service here, now is the time to think about all of those in your circle of friends and acquaintances Think of all of those in your spiritual community, even those you haven't met yet. And let's hold everybody in a greeting time of love. This is...
And good morning again. I have the privilege of sharing with you our daily word for today. The word for today is world peace. I contribute to peace in the world. When I learn of conflict in my community or in the world, my response may be frustration, sadness, or anger. If I have those feelings, I remember that I am more than merely human. I am a living expression of God, heir to all that God is. I use my divine faculties of wisdom, understanding, and love to create the abiding peace that is my birthright. Centered in divine peace, I realize that every person is as much an expression of God as I am. As differences dissolve in a way that transcends human understanding, I come to know oneness with all the world's people. I let this realization shape my response to every person and every situation. In an awareness of my oneness with all people, my thoughts, words, and actions contribute to peace in the world. And from John 17, 22, the glory that you have given me, I have given them so that they may be one as we are one. Right now, we'd like to begin a time of prayer and meditation by singing, Welcome Holy Spirit. Wherever it is that you may be this morning, I invite you to find a very comfortable and familiar position for your body. You can give your body permission to relax, to let go, to let be in this moment in your place. You can also give your mind that same loving permission to relax into the moment, to be still. And with body at ease and mind at ease, your awareness is free then to commune with spirit. And this communion is of your own design. It is exactly what you need for it to be. For some of you, it will be a time of profound stillness. And for others, a time of color and sound and images and insights and understanding, feelings. It is your time. 
proclaim it, let it be so. So as our awareness is prepared to engage in that experience of communion, we enter into that deep of our heart, that secret place of the Most High, that special gathering for our soul and spirit. So as we have prepared, let us now enter into this time of stillness and do so with calmness, with peace, with presence, with hope, and with joy together. And before we prepare to move your awareness back to your body and back to this time and space, I invite you to take just a few more moments in the stillness to be fully present, to be fully loved, and to hear that affirmation for this month, I live in a world of wonder. I live in a world of wonder. And once again, I live in a world of wonder. As you prepare to move your awareness back to your body now, you know that even an instant during which your awareness is immersed in that deep of your heart, that healing and transformation take place. And you know that you can bring with you into your body, your mind, your heart, the essence of this experience in the stillness. And though we are across the miles, we yet share this experience in the here and now. And any time in this week, as you choose to, you can bring back this experience once again and be blessed all over. So now with a deep sense of gratitude for this opportunity being together as we have been, I invite you to take a deep, slow breath in through your nose. Hold it for a moment. Exhale slowly, deliberately through your mouth. When you're ready, open your eyes and let us sing together. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.
Thank you, band. Wonderful job. Where else but here could you get traditional Neethought music, country music, and music from a movie score? Yeah, exactly. Here we are. It was song of the year. Yes, enjoy. <laughs> I'm excited about this month. It is going to be a month of curiosity. Now, we've been interested in curiosity for some time. I did some research about, you've heard the, the, uh, the old quote, curiosity killed the cat. And I can't find anywhere why it is that we use that. I know what it means, but why it means that, I just don't know. But there it is. It showed up somewhere in the early 1800s in the English language. In 1840, uh, Charles Dickens wrote the novel, The Old Curiosity Shop. In 1865, 
uh, Alice in Wonderland was written, and in one specific place, Alice talks about Wonderland by saying it's curiouser and curiouser. In um, 2011, NASA dropped the rover on the surface of Mars to move around and take pictures and send back data, and that rover just happens to be called Curiosity. And also, uh, a cable television channel was launched in 2015 called Curiosity Stream. So it's been in our mind and our heart for quite some time, and we'll continue it through this whole month. Now, our affirmation for this month is, I live in a world of wonder. And that word wonder brought a lot of things to my mind. One was a poem that I wrote, a tiny little poem I wrote uh, before Christmas this past, uh, was 2018. I wade into the wonder, I soak into the splendor, I dissolve into the delight, I evaporate into the ecstasy, and it is yet barely Tuesday. So our affirmation for this month is, again, I live in a world of wonder. The other thing that came to mind was from another movie, 1968, when 2001 A Space Odyssey came out. Dave, the main, uh, um, what do you call it, thing, astronaut in the movie, uh, was at a pivotal moment in the show, in the movie, and he said, something wonderful is going to happen. And ever since the first time I saw that movie, that phrase has haunted me in a positive way. Something wonderful is going to happen. It kind of runs through my mind all the time. Now, there are two perspectives, I think, that we can look at this idea of wonder from. One is wonder as a noun. Wonder as a, an idea, a concept, an archetypal image, a, a thing of some sort that engenders in us awe, amazement, intrigue, asking questions, wondering about it, all of those things. And we can, as we see wonder as this noun, whatever it may be, we can watch it, we can observe it, we can witness it, we can even receive things from it. So we, are in, we can be engaged with wonder as this noun. And one of the places that we can look is in nature. I mean, nature is full of wonder, don't you think? And here in South Florida, we have several zoos where you can go as soon as the, the restrictions are lifted on us. But you can go to a zoo and see things that you wouldn't ordinarily get to see and be amazed by that. We can, you can see all kinds of reptiles and all kinds of animals and birds and everything else. Also very close by here, we have Butterfly World where you can see hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of butterflies and stand there with your mouth hanging open, just being amazed at, at what you see. I've, I've not seen one here, but in Colorado, there was a butterfly world there, a butterfly uh, pavilion there. And there were some blue butterflies that were neon blue, and they were about this big around. They were just amazing. What wonder was there? So we can see so many things there in the zoo. That, that stimulate that idea of, of wonder in us and bring that to our mind. We can also look at other people and wonder about people. You see how people are, the way they act, the way they think, the way they speak, and just wonder what it would be like to be that person. If somebody acts in an inappropriate way toward you, you can stop and think, I wonder what it's like to be that person right now where they're acting in this horrible way, what it must feel like, what it must be. And we can, we can think about that. We can consider that. We can observe that behavior that's going on there and get involved in it in that way of watching it and learning from that as well. We can, we can learn from religion. What would it be like to be a Pentecostal, a, a snake handling, tongue speaking Pentecostal? What would that be like? What would the experience be like of being a Catholic or an Orthodox Jew or Hindu or a Muslim? What about all those possibilities that are there that we can wonder about? What it would be like to go through a day holding those beliefs? Suppose you were an atheist, didn't believe in God at all. What would a day be like be, having, holding that belief? What would it be like when you were disappointed what about when you were excited? What about when you were afraid? What would it be like, the wonder that is there from different spiritual perspectives? So we could go on and on and on looking at wonder as a noun, as, a, as an abstract thing out there somewhere and how we might see it, how we might interact with it. That could go on and on for us. So we could do nature, we can do, oh, science is the other thing I was going to mention. One thing that's always fascinated me about science is the study of the very, very large and the very, very small. 
As you know, in, in regular 3D time and space, Newtonian physics does the job for us. We can measure things, we can engineer things, and that works just fine. But at some point, when you start getting smaller and smaller and smaller, Newtonian physics breaks down, and then the math that goes along with it breaks down, and we have to move into quantum physics and quantum mechanics to understand it. And it's the same way when we go the other direction. If we get larger and larger and larger, at some point, the laws that operate in that realm aren't the ones we're familiar with here. I heard an astronomer say one time that one of the reasons that it, despite our efforts to find intelligent life somewhere else in the universe, one of the reasons that we haven't seen that is because it's very likely that if there are other civilizations, they operate on another level, either much smaller or much larger, and have a completely different law, set of laws around physics, around math and everything, and we're looking for them using our technology, and they're outside of our technology, so we may be bumping into them and don't even realize it. Uh, that's always kind of intrigued me. And, and looking at the cute little phrases I use, like picometers for tiny, tiny little things and nanometers for tiny, tiny little things. And, and uh, uh, I forgot the words now for the great big ones, but they have some unique, interesting words you don't hear very often because it talks about huge numbers. I heard something else new the other day. You've all heard of light years. A light year is the distance that light will travel in the span of a year's time at 186,000 miles per second. A light year is pretty big, but given the technology we have now to look out into the universe and see further and further and further into the universe, they're now talking about not only light years, but light centuries which means the distance that light will travel going 186,000 miles per second in a century. I mean, that just, it makes your head go thump, thump, thump when you, when you even think about that sort of thing. But there, the, the wonder is there, that which it, it engenders questioning. It engenders awe and magnificence that is there. So we have all these areas where we can look at, at wonder as, as a noun. Another place we can look at it is with spirituality. We can look deeper and deeper into spirituality. So I wonder about this. Have you ever wondered about if you took forgiveness to the absolute extreme, all the way as far as you could take it, what would it be like? If you took hope as far as it could possibly, possibly go, humanly speaking, what would that be like? If you took peace in that direction, if you took power in that direction. Bev's going to be, as she mentioned it to you earlier, her, teaching her class on the 12 powers uh, coming up here. And uh, with my fascination about curiosity, I really think we ought to make curiosity the 13th power. Ron, I don't know how far I'd get with that, suggesting that, but uh, it would be interesting anyway. So uh, curiosity could be one of those things that, active, that we activate in our life that has such a great impact to us. But we, we could look at, at all the aspects of spirituality from that perspective of wondering what it would really be like if this was the way it was. And we'll talk more about that in just a minute as I talk about uh, wonder as a verb, which brings me up to that point. We can look at wonder as a noun, as something somewhere, an object or an idea, a feeling, whatever. We can also look at wonder from the point of being a verb, that is, being not just observing and watching the wonder that is there, but engaging it, becoming involved in it, even manifesting wonder in our life. That's a different way of looking at it as well. So we can, we can look at wonder from that, that point of being a verb, and it turns into something that is dynamic and moving and enticing, an experience for us, a creative experience for us. And just as with, with wonder as a noun, there are a number of different areas that we can look at it here. One is food. I thought this was interesting. Um, any of you ever eaten dill pickles and mustard? I haven't, but I've heard of that. Uh, mayonnaise and vanilla wafers. I have done that, and that's pretty neat. Yes, it is, believe it or not. <laughs> and peanut butter and bananas. Well, peanut butter on anything just pretty much works. Um, I heard something the other day that I, well, I couldn't quite wrap my head around. That is chocolate bacon. Yeah. That, that just didn't seem to go. But the possibilities are there. Yeah. And, and the wonder that goes along with that of experiencing that. I made a salad the other night. The first time I'd ever made it, it was really good. We had oranges and radishes and uh, um, pomegranate. That was the one I couldn't think of. And pistachio and an orange juice dressing to go on it. 
And all those flavors went together in a way that I didn't expect. And it was just amazing, wonderful, wonderful. So there are all kinds of things you can do with food as an experience as such. Now, I used to watch a show on, on, on cable called um, uh, Andrew Zimmern and Bizarre Foods. Some of you have heard that he traveled all over the world eating the most incredible, amazing, awful things you can imagine. And it was, it was kind of vicarious experience watching him do that and the expression on his face when he ate some of these things. But I, I would be glad to leave that to him and I'll just watch it happen along the way. So there are all kinds of possibilities there with our food and doing things that we've never done before. I remember the first time uh, when we went to Disney World and got a turkey leg. That was a new experience to be walking around with a turkey leg in your hand. The, the, my manners from my southern upbringing were quite threatened or challenged by that, but I did it anyway. And it turned out to be quite an experience in and of itself. So we can, we can look at food from that place of wonder as a verb. Wonder, creating wonder, not just looking at it, but making it happen, manifesting it, demonstrating it, creating that. We can also look at, at personality from that point of wonder as a verb. What, and each of us probably have some sense about ourselves about whether we're extroverts or introverts. And you've heard my story. You know that I'm a blow the bottom out of the scale introvert when I take one of those tests. So what, for me, what, it would have, what would happen if I played with this a little bit is I'd say, okay, I'd get up in the morning and say, okay, now today I'm going to experience wonder because I'm going to live my life as if I were an extrovert. So instead of doing what I usually do as an introvert, I'm going to do what an extrovert was and just see what it's like, see what that experience brings to me and the wonder that it brings. I might find some things that I really like, something I've missed, something that would be helpful to me. Because to be one thing all the way, all the time, you're going to miss something along the way. And my daddy used to say that if you, the only tool you have is a hammer, then everything looks like a nail. So when we get stuck in those places, so this opportunity of using wonder and imagining and playing these scenarios, scenarios out could be a very good thing for us. When you think about personality as being patient or impatient, play with that a little bit. If you pride yourself on being a patient person, then go through at least part of a day allowing yourself to feel impatient when the situation comes up and watch that wonder being played out in that way. So over and over we could do these things to, to bring different kinds of experiences to ourselves. Uh, we can also do this spirituality of living this, not just thinking about it, not just imagining what hope would be to the extreme end, not just imagining what forgiveness would be, not, not just imagining what radical and instantaneous healing would be, but, but putting yourself in a place of experiencing that. If it is forgiveness, then we all have somebody we haven't forgiven along the way. And play that out. Imagine what you would need to do to actually bring that forgiveness into fulfillment. Imagine what you would need to do or what you are doing to bring about spontaneous healing in your life. Whatever it is that you can think about, that you wonder about, you can put into motion by doing certain things. Allow your mind to play that out for you. Allow your body to act that out for you. Allow yourself to experience that in a wondrous kind of way. There's, there's religion spirituality there that takes us to an extreme. Um, oh, this is the one I wanted to mention about religion. You know enough about some of the other religions to play with this a little bit. But again, plan for part of your day. You're going to live part of your day as an Orthodox Jew. You live part of your day as a devout Christian. You live part of your day as a, as a snake handling Pentecost. You part of your day as an Episcopalian. What, what would that mean? When you have a phone call to make, would your phone call be any different depending on which one of those roles you stepped into? If you're going to deal with some of the feelings that you have, what, how would that vary among those people who believe different things? Really interesting to play with that. It's amazing the, the awesomeness and the wonderful ideas that come up out of that. So we have that ability to do that. One of our 12 powers is imagination, of course, and we can activate that when we start playing with these ideas of wonder and all the things that are in our world. Our affirmation for the month, I live in a world of wonder. And I, that, that phrase keeps coming to my mind, something wonderful is going to happen. When you are playing with the idea of wonder as a noun, let that phrase run through your mind. Something wonderful is going to happen because of this. 
when you start playing with that, that idea of wonder as a verb and creating something and living something out there. Allow that phrase to run through your mind. Something wonderful is going to happen. So no matter what you do, which way you look, what you bring up within you, whether you're observing or whether you're engaging, allow that phrase to run through your mind. Something wonderful is going to happen. I'm going to close with another poem. It's called This Do. The brisk breeze ruffled the leg of my trousers and I remembered a small hand with pudgy fingers tugging on my pants leg. The spray of the fountain splattered in the pool and I remembered that marvelous revelation arriving at Waterfall's Edge. The teasing aroma of just cooked breakfast beckoned and I remembered early Sunday vaca summer vacation mornings, red eye gravy, biscuits and daddy. The buzzard freely soared hundreds of feet above and I remembered moments of bliss, freedom and oneness, the sparkling expanse of grace in prayer. My friend offered a smiling hug and I remembered blessing light in darkness, divine love embracing in warm newness. A hundred ways today God spoke and I remembered. So I invite you to care with you through this week and actually through this month. Something wonderful is going to happen. As we think about all of the wonder in our lives and all of the wonderful things that we expect, we always expect good in our life. And it's my joy to interact with so many of you. And uh, it's been a pleasure to interact as we do on Zoom and by phone and by text. So one thing that we focus on here is the belief in prosperity, the belief in abundance. And the saying we use is, God is our source. We can use this month to wonder, what does that mean? And how is your faith in that? One tool that Unity uses in encouraging an understanding of absolute abundance always available to us is to use the tool of unexpected income. I think maybe Unity on the Bay is running this program right now. I've done it throughout my 25 years in Unity, and it's a wonderful tool. Some of you have had unexpected income come your way. Many of us have received a stimulus check. Before your head goes to all of the needs that you have, think about how that even is unexpected income. Do you have the courage to give a 10% tithe on that? Do you have a courage to use that 10% tithe to bless another person who has blessed you, to bless this spiritual community, to reach out and bless someone who may need food? Think about before you just toss that money into your bank account or use it for something maybe you truly don't need at this time. Think about sharing, giving, reaching out and wonder how that law of giving and receiving works in your life. I will tell you it works. It has worked for me in so many years. As we give, we receive. So whether it's money or smiles or caring, compassion, reach out, give. If you're really stressed, about the lack that's appearing in your life. Find a way to give something. Get out of your head. Give some joy to somebody else. So that's my mini sermon. And while you're using that stimulus check to purchase, go to smile.amazon.com and be sure that you designate Unity Church of Pompano Beach. That's our official corporate name. Unity Church of Pompano Beach as your charitable organization and Amazon actually gives a donation to us. And we've had a couple hundred dollars throughout uh, the months. So I'll let you know in, in a few, as, as I remember to look it up, we will look it up and let you know what's come into us from Amazon. There are many ways that you can give. 
We encourage you to give as you feel you can. We are so grateful to our consistent givers in our membership, in our congregation. I've been amazed that some of you who aren't even members, but yet you come regularly. And whatever you've given in the offering plate, you go ahead and send it in to us. So thank you so much. We know that we are doing well and we will continue to do well because we care, we love, and we are serving the greater good in all that we do. So thank you all, and with love, let's bless our gifts right now. Some of you may know our affirmation, and I'm going to share it with you. Today, we give up all lack in our life. With a grateful heart, we acknowledge God as all that is. Today, we let go of that concern of lack, and we allow God to unfold in our lives. And we see God as good. We allow good to unfold. Good is ours. Good and more good is ours. An ever-increasing good is ours. Everywhere we go, we see this good. We feel it. We experience it. We freely give it. And you know what? It always multiplies itself around me. And so it is. Amen. And now enjoy our band closing us out as you think about your giving today. And we feel gratitude for all we have.
Yay, band. Thank you so much. And now as we wrap up and get ready to close, we hold each of you in love and in our hearts. Those of you who do need your stimulus check to supplement uh, your job, whatever you may have lost. Our band, I know, has lost all their gigs. We bless you, and we see prosperity flowing your way. And those of us who are still receiving income, we'll hold up everything we can to see the possible good for all of us. Those who have illness in your life, we hold you in healing thoughts. In all ways, relationships, family, we hold all of you, and we do our part to uphold each other. So let's bless each other as we go forward today. We're using the standard unity blessing. So together, the light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Let there be peace on earth. Sunday. Blessings, everybody, and ministry leaders. We'll see you on Zoom at 1230.